Last week we did a poll about which element you would like us to discuss. And you chose again the new element in the poll, in this case, cesium. Now this element is besides rare, extremely reactive. Let's dig into the details and find out what makes an atom clock tick. Welcome to Cube Chemistry, where we will discuss all the elements of the periodic table and also do experiments. And if you like this video and want to see more, make sure to subscribe. Now before we get started, I first want to thank you guys for the support in the past 10 months. A few weeks ago we received our new milestone, which is the YouTube partner status. Now this means that we can now think about scaling up our business and making even better videos and start to build on the dream to make this channel the go-to place if you enjoy simple chemistry videos. Now we also launched a poll to ask whether you wanted to see memberships or merchandise first and you told us in the polls that you would love to see merchandise. So we will be getting our shop online as soon as possible. For now this status means that you can now give us a super thanks, which means that you can donate to us if you like and enjoy a specific video. This will help us in the future to get new equipment for experimenting and making the videos more professional. For now, thanks again so much for all the support and enjoy the video about this beautiful element. So let's look at the cube. Now inside of this cube there seems to be a metal, but it also looked like it has been liquid. Well that is very much possible. Right now it's a solid because we're below 28 degrees in this room. Now if this element would be outside of this cube, I'd be in real danger. But luckily it is safely inside this cube. Now also the gas that is accompanying this metal is not just air, or we would immediately react with it. Besides this metal is the noble gas argon, to prevent it from reacting with any other element. Now maybe I should have done this in the summer, because then we could have put the cube in the sun and let the metal melt. But well, we will leave that for a part two I guess. Now I think this is one of the cubes that I will value the most, since this is such a rare element. If you also want one of these cubes, or any other of the cubes, make sure to click on the link in the description and use the promo code. You will get a 10% discount and will also be helping out our channel. The discovering of cesium dates back to the mid 19th century, when spectroscopy, a groundbreaking analytical method, was gaining prominence. In 1860, German chemist Robert Bunsen, from the Bunsen burner, and Gustav Kirchhoff were studying the mineral waters from the spa town of Bad Durkheim in Germany using flame spectroscopy, a technique they had invented a year earlier. Flame spectroscopy is an analytical technique used to identify and quantify the presence of certain elements in a sample by analyzing the light emitted when the sample is heated in a flame. It is based on the principle that when atoms or ions uh, in a sample are excited by high temperatures, they emit light at a characteristic wavelength that are unique to each element. This makes it a highly effective method for detecting specific elements in a mixture. Now this asks for a short demonstration. In this demonstration I will be showing that different compounds have different colors. The stuff that I will be using, using is sodium chloride, basically table salt, potassium chloride and copper sulfate. The experiment goes something like this. First of all we do the sample introduction. Now the sample, often in a liquid dissolved form, is introduced into the flame usually via a nebulizer or directly as a fine spray. So in this case we used the table salt, we dissolved it in a little bit of water and we put it into a Bunsen burner. You can see here that it gives a nice orange flame. After this we get to the excitation stage. The high temperature of the flame excites the electrons in the atoms of the sample. Excitation occurs when the electrons absorb the energy and move to higher energy levels. Now as the excited electrons return to their lower energy states, they release energy in the form of light. The wavelength of this light is specific to the element being analyzed. Now if we would have done the real experiment, the emitted light is passed through a prism to isolate the specific wavelengths. The intensity of the light at each wavelength is then measured, providing quality, identification and quantitative concentration information about the elements present. Now, when they used flame spectroscopy, they identified two brilliant blue lines in the emission spectrum. These lines did not match any known element, leading them to conclude that they have discovered something entirely new. They named it the element cesium, 
after the Latin word Cassius, meaning sky blue, in reference to the vivid color they observed. Now the cool thing about spectroscopy in general is that you can determine the composition of materials even when you can't reach them. And this is why we use spectroscopy to study the stars. Now this discovery of course marked a significant milestone in chemistry. Spectroscopy allowed scientists to identify elements based on a unique light they emitted. And cesium was one of the first elements discovered using this method. Now this not only cemented spectroscopy's importance as a scientific tool, but also highlighted the precision and innovation of Bunsen and Kirchhoff's work. Over time, cesium properties and applications would be explored, proving its value across multiple domains. Now, like mentioned before, the name cesium is intrinsically tied to its discovery. The Latin name Cassius uh, translates to sky blue, a direct nod to the two bright spectral lines that revealed the element's presence. Now, in an era where many elements were named after mythological figures or geographical locations, cesium stands out as a poetic reflection of its unique spectral fingerprint. Now, this naming convention also underscores the significant role of spectroscopy in the field of chemistry, where elements could now be identified not just by their physical or chemical properties, but also by their interaction with light. Cesium is a member of the alkali metal family, sharing characteristics with elements like lithium, sodium and potassium. However, it stands out due to several extraordinary physical properties. Cesium is one of the softest metals, with most hardness of just 0.2. Now, it's so soft that it can be cut with a knife, and freshly cut cesium reveals a lustrous silvery golden surface. This appearance, is, however, is fleeting as cesium rapidly oxidizes in air, forming a dull surface due to its extreme reactivity. Now, luckily, in our cube, we can still see that silvery golden surface. Now, another remarkable feature of cesium is its low melting point of 28 and a half degrees Celsius or 83.3 degrees Fahrenheit, making it one of the few metals that can exist as a liquid near room temperature. This property makes cesium particularly useful in applications requiring a liquid metal. Cesium is also the heaviest of the stable alkali metals, contributing to its unique behavior in chemical and physical interactions. Now, chemically speaking, cesium is one of the most reactive and electropositive of all the stable elements. This high reactivity means cesium readily reacts with water, producing cesium hydroxide and hydrogen gas in an exothermic reaction. Now, this reaction is so vigorous that it can cause an explosion, which is why cesium is stored in non-reactive substances like mineral oil or inert gases. Now, cesium also forms a variety of compounds, including cesium chloride, cesium carbonate, and cesium nitrate. These compounds are used in a diverse applications, from catalysts in chemical reactions to form compounds in optical glass manufacturing. Cesium's reactivity is both a challenge and a boon, necessitating careful handling while enabling its use in cutting-edge technologies. Now, in terms of abundance, cesium is relatively rare, ranking 45th in the Earth's crust. It is primarily found in mineral polysite, which is mined from a few key locations worldwide, including Canada and Zimbabwe. The extraction process involved crushing polysite and separating cesium compounds through chemical methods, ultimately yielding pure cesium. Now, this rarity makes cesium an expensive and strategically significant element. As such, efforts are ongoing to find more effective extraction techniques and alternative sources to meet growing demand. Now, because of reactivity, you're probably wondering what do we use it for? Well, cesium's unique properties make it invaluable across several industries. Here's one. Atomic clocks. Cesium-133 is central to the operation of atomic clocks, which are the most precise timekeeping devices in existence. The vibrations of cesium define the length of a second in the international system of units. This level of accuracy is critical for GPS, telecommunications and network synchronization. Now, we use it in the oil and gas industry. Cesium formate, a dense and viscous compound, is used as a drilling fluid in petroleum industry. It stabilizes well bores and enhances efficiency during drilling, particularly in extreme environments. 
Now, there's also medical uses. Cesium-137 is utilized in radiotherapy for cancer treatment, where its gamma radiation targets and destroys malignant cells. Although its use has declined over safety concerns, it remains a crucial tool in certain treatments. It's also used in industrial gogs. Cesium-137 also powers industrial gogs used to measure moisture, density and thickness of various metals, ensuring quality control and manufacturing. Now, personally, I find this one of the coolest applications, space technology. Cesium is employed in ion propulsion systems for spacecrafts. Its highly atomic mass and ease of ionization make it an ideal propellant for long-distance space missions. While cesium is incredibly useful, it is also hazardous due to its high reactivity and, in the case of cesium-137, it's even radioactive. Well, non-radioactive cesium compounds are only mildly toxic, but the metal itself must be stored carefully to prevent accidental reactions. Radioactive cesium requires stringent handling protocols to pr protect both people and the environment. Now, cesium, I think we can conclude, is a fascinating element with a rich history and a wide range of applications that touch many aspects of modern life, from its role in keeping time with the atomic precision to its use in advanced drilling and space exploration. Now, if you think I missed anything, leave it in the comments and if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe.